of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And a blessed Easter to all of you and to all of you who are joining us from home. Um, you know, our scriptures on this first, on this Easter morning, um, really are the beginning of the unfolding of the revelation of Christ's resurrection. And that the opening gospel from the Gospel of John um, for this eight-day octave celebration of Easter is one that really is an invitation to faith, faith in Christ's resurrection, and an invitation on our part to be witnesses to the resurrection. So let's pray that we can be open to that grace as we celebrate this Easter liturgy. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you come with your word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. And you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, 
You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians praise the Paschal victim, offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep, Christ the Just One paid the price. Reconciling sinners to the Father, death and life fought bitterly for this wondrous victory. The Lord of life who died Reigns glorify. O 
Mary, come and say what you saw at break of day. The empty tomb of my living Lord, I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testify, shroud and grave clothes side by side. Yes, Christ my hope rose gloriously, he goes before you into Galilee. Share the good news, sing joyfully, his death is victory. Lord Jesus, victor king, show us mercy. Amen. Alleluia. 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 See how salvation for all has been won. Up from the grave our new life has begun. Life now perfected in Jesus the Son. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So we'll just say that a little. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. I, I remember watching a movie one time, and it was uh, it was in in Greece, and it started with you know a little scene. This this is a Greek Orthodox, obviously, but they were walking through the village, and everybody as soon as they crossed someone, someone would say Christ is risen, and the other would always return Christ. He is risen indeed, and um, and I think the scriptures today are an invitation for us to say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Um, I, I was really, you know, taken by this gospel in a way that I don't know if I have before, um, especially as I was thinking of my reaction to hearing the Passion on Friday. Um, and it's not the first time I really reacted to the Passion that way, but, um, you know, in the gospel today, you've got three different characters, three different persons, Mary of Magdala, Peter, and the other disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved. 
And, um, and they all see the same thing, but they all, you know, Mary Magdalene um, immediately assumes the body is stolen. Um, Peter doesn't get the benefit of this in this gospel of knowing what's going on in him, but he just goes in and sees and there's no comment on what he concludes. Um, but then the disciple whom Jesus loved goes in and sees and believes. Um, and I was just thinking about those three different responses um, and thinking about what led up to that moment for each of the three of them. Um, in Mary Magdalene's case, um, she had this deep, intimate love for Jesus that um, was just overwhelmed with grief. I mean, she had, she had been one of those at the foot of the cross and all she could experience was a deep grief that didn't allow her to take in a new possibility right away. She needed more to get there. Um, one thing I'm struck by is, this, again, this is just the beginning of a whole unfolding of, of Jesus' appearances that we'll hear throughout the course of these next eight days. Um, and pretty soon we'll hear another encounter of Mary Magdalene with the risen Christ. Um, but her grief is just so deep and profound that she can't experience another possibility or imagine another possibility. And maybe she wasn't there during a lot of the times where Jesus revealed some things to his more intimate, closer disciples. Um, then there's Peter, who I'm sure is still reeling from the events of the, the time of Christ's passion, where, you know, maybe it, he didn't quite get the, the sense of it. It says here, none of them really realized he had to rise from the dead. But, um, but there are some passages in John's Gospel that um, were very... Um, explicit. I mean, where Jesus says, now the hour has come, my hour to be glorified. And should I ask God to save me from this hour? Should I ask the Father to save me from this hour? But this is for why, this is the reason I came. So that's kind of this proclamation of Jesus. Um, and, and I just wonder if Peter took it in with the depth that maybe the beloved disciple took it in. Um, and then the scene that I was referring to from the Passion reading on Friday, where, you know, Jesus says, one of you will betray me. And then Peter's like, hey, find out who it is. You know, you're right next to him. You're right. And, and, and he leans over and says, who is it, Lord? And, and he says, the one who I dipped the morsel in and handed to. And then immediately that happens and no one does anything. Judas is just told, go and do what you're about to do. And, and it's part of me is like, if you asked him who it was, and then he tells you who it was, aren't you going to stop him from doing it? You know, um, aren't you going to stop the betrayer? And, and part of me is thinking, you know, it's like, you know, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved was there in that moment. He was there when Jesus made that proclamation. He's there at the foot of the cross with the women. Um, He's present and taking it all in, in a way that I think we're all invited to whenever we commemorate the Passion. Take it all in and really try and be in tune with what Jesus is all about. Um, and because I think he was there and had an open heart, he was able to recognize something that the others weren't as quick to recognize. Um, and I think that's just, for me, it, it kind of, invites me um, on this Easter to say, what are the things that are, are preventing me? What are the things that are preventing me from being open to the risen Christ? Because I think one of the things about these readings, um, you know, it says in the Acts of the Apostles, it says, you know, he appeared um, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses God had chosen uh, chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. There is a sense of that Jesus, the risen Christ, appears to those who eat and drink with him, who believe, who have a foundation of faith. It's not like this, you know, real um, flashy thing. It's this very subtle coming of the risen Christ to each one of us in ways that we only in, in a spirit of faith can recognize and can receive. Um, and so I think that's the invitation. The invitation is um, 
to really pray that we can not just encounter the risen Christ on Easter Sunday, but every moment, every moment where we need the risen Christ to lift us up out of whatever it is that's that's not of God. Um, you know, one thing that happened to me today I was when I was celebrating Mass a little bit earlier this morning, I um, I genuflected and my knee felt great. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, a few days ago I was like, I wonder if I really did injure it. I'm just not really testing it yet, you know. Um, and so that kind of, those, those kind of simple little doubts of, um, which obviously are not earth-shattering realities, but um, but just the sense of when when are those doubts in us? Or, or I'll be honest with you, when I think of the pandemic, I'm thinking, um, you know, CDC says if we are fully vaccinated and you're in a small group with another fully vaccinated group of people, you're fine. You don't have to worry. Um, and, and then there's this sense of, do I believe it? Do I believe that this is really possible? But I think there's a whole bunch of things. Do I believe it's possible? Do I believe you know, relationships can be reconciled? Do I believe, um, you know, that if I work for justice, that that effort will be fruitful? Um, if I, do I believe um, in the power of forgiveness, um, whether I'm the one offering the forgiveness or the, the one who's being, uh, the pen, you know, the penitent asking to receive it? Um, do I believe in times of grief that that loss will be healed and I'll be able to find a new reality? Those, there's, there's all sorts of ways that the risen Christ comes to us. Um, and we, but we need to enter as someone who is in a spirit of faith who sees and believes, believes in Christ's presence. Um, and then to witness to it. I mean, the, the Acts of the Apostles are all about witness witness to the resurrection, help others to experience the risen Christ in their lives as well. So I conclude where I started. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. And now let us uh, continue our liturgy with um, our baptismal promises as witnesses to the resurrection. Um, and first we will bless this water and I move the ribbon and I move it. I'll make it hard. So dearly beloved with one heart and soul, let us by our prayers approach this font of rebirth praying that the Almighty Father may bestow on us all his merciful help. And so we pray. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism, O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning to virtue, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shot through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. And O God, whose Son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side, along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now upon uh, the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. And so may the power of the Holy Spirit come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, 
so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And, before we get sprinkled with the water, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. I do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I, I do. do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I Amen. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And for those of you at home, I'm not going to sprinkle you, but just imagine yourself receiving the blessing of this water. <clears throat> so now let us pray. Bring, call to mind the intentions we have on this Easter day for ourselves, for our world, for our church. Let us pray for all those who find themselves walking in darkness or doubting their faith, that they may encounter the risen Lord who brings light to their journey and peace to their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all the baptized, that Christ will pour out the Spirit upon us and enable us to continue the mission of bringing hope, meaning, and love to our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace, that the Spirit of God will bring, up, bring forth a springtime of peace in our cities, our nation, and amongst nations, so that all, na all peoples may live in safety and with dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are grieving, that God will console them and give them peace and hope as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite you to offer other prayers, um, those of you in my, um, of my community here and, and those of you at home, to lift up your intentions to the Lord. Let's pray for all catechumens and candidates who entered the church last night, that they might be full of God's grace and be granted courage and perseverance in living the Christian life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray too for um, our Regis Jesuit community and for all the ways and all the, the individuals in particular who are in, in, in great need of God's uh, good news of Christ's risen life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's, let's also pray for all Christians in uh, persecuted lands, that <clears throat> especially those who can't celebrate Easter openly today, that they might know the Lord's closeness and might have faith and hope in the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all the other intentions that all of us lift up to God from the silence of our hearts and all those we've been invited to pray for, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers and open us more and more to the ways you want to bless us, the ways you want to enter our lives and accompany us. And we pray all this through Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for in your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever.
And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for in your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has restored our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as whose, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Samuel our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people 
that you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so praying for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I leave you my peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During this quiet after communion, we invite you to make a spiritual communion, acknowledging your faith in the person of the risen Christ and your desire to be one in union with him. Let us pray. Lord, look upon your church with unfailing love and favor, <clears throat> so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. <clears throat> Amen. 
May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may and may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross? Sinners to 